Yeah. Welcome back to the show. My name is Elton Brobe. And of course, your comments, questions are welcome via our social media handles. We are live on Facebook, on X Spaces, on YouTube, and of course, on myjawonline.com. Now, let's settle for the details. Now, a day of chaos, uncertainty, and finally, an indefinite suspension of parliament, leaving numerous government businesses in limbo. MPs returned from their annual long summer break exactly a week ago, poised to deal with some crucial public business, including the following. Approval of budget for the first quarter of 2025, usually in November, and then when there's a new government in place, they will, they will have the time to go through and then prepare a comprehensive budget. But spending must take place between 1st January until when there's a new budget. So that obviously uh, is presented in November, debated and approved, but clearly with what things stands now, that is in limbo, approval of uh, budget for the first quarter of 2025. There's also the government promise to lay before parliament an ally that, 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 that government is of the view that will revoke mining in forest reserves. Now, we don't know the status of this, but with the suspension, it's unclear the progress that can be made on the, on the airline. So that's business number two that is in limbo. There's also a request by government for the approval of $250 million uh, for the Ghana Financial Stability Fund with the development that is also suffering some setback. And there's also the approval of uh, $250 million for Ghana's energy sector loan. So these are some of the programs that are likely to be affected by the, by the indefinite suspension of parliament. There's also the approval of some $350 million worth of tax waivers. You know, this matter has been in and out of parliament for close to four years, if you like. Now, in the la at the last certain, par parliament made some progress. Uh, they, they amended some of them. The, the expectation has always been that with this final session, they will go through and have it approved. It doesn't look like that that, that, that is going to happen any time soon. Of course, there are some two Supreme Court judges uh, vetted by the appointment committee awaiting approval by the plenary. That is also on hold. How did we get here? It all started last week when Tamale South Member of Parliament, Haruna Idrusu, pointed out that four MPs, three of whom are on the MPP side, were no longer eligible to hold themselves as MPs and called for their removal. The Speaker of Parliament, Arban Babin, agreed with them and directed them to vacate their seats. The Supreme Court stayed that ruling pending a determination uh, in 10 days. But the two sides of the House have maintained they are the majority. So their return to Parliament today sparked a whole lot of confusion and uncertainty as had been anticipated. Uh, we'll have a detailed conversation on this shortly. First, though, let me take you uh, to Parliament where our correspondent, Koko Asante, uh, joins me with an update of what took place uh, in the House. Koku, you're welcome. Thank you, Elton. So let's start from 5 a.m. What happened yeah. there? At 5 a.m., the NPP majority side clearly were trying to play the long game and strategic wise they knew they had to be there early so the majority chief whip um frank and and his deputies were already in the house as early as 5 a.m today to try and get to the chamber and occupy the majority side so they did go in there but then at some point the ndc mps also came in and, and asked to be allowed in but then that was the time some military men had been deployed on the request of parliament of ghana itself to sort of clean the place up, do a bomb sweep to ensure that the place was good. And in fact, those are some of the things that the letter referenced in terms of the specifics that they were looking for in that. So the military personnel. The military personnel. So they were there on the instructions of parliament. Yes. In fact, there's a letter that was signed by Camilo Puaman, the deputy clerk in charge of legislative management services, on the authority of the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagben, to the chief of staff of the Ghana Armed Forces, requesting the deployment of certain specific officers of the Ghana Armed Forces to come and sweep the conference center where the parliamentary sitting was happening. So they were there. And so they were the only ones who actually got Frank and Adam to get out. If not, he was going to occupy the majority side up until when proceedings started. Mm. So when they all came out, there was a sweep and all. At a time, the NDC MPs were now arriving in their numbers, right. led by their chief whip, Kwame Gavin Sagbojai. They were there 
And at that point, they were trading accusations at each other because the media were conducting interviews, talking to each other, to trying to see what exactly was happening and what exactly they thought the unfair advantage was. Mind you, the NDC MPs have made an allegation that the security in parliament had thought to give the NPP an undue advantage by allowing them into the chamber. Mm. So they were all out. When the sweep finished, they had to wait till 8 o'clock when the marshal's indication had said that they would be allowed into the chamber. So at 8 o'clock, they all started walking in. The MPP MPs did go first, mm. led by the chief whip, Kwame Gavin Saboja. No, Frank and Don Pre, where they were standing very close to the entry to the main chamber at the makeshift parliamentary chamber at the Accra International Conference Center, the dome. So in, in, invariably, they, they walked in, but they were just four. Right. So that meant that the NDC MPs who were there in their dozens, at that time I could count almost 40 NDC MPs, were able to overrun them and took over the majority side. They sat there for a while, but given what we expected, this was going to be confrontation, wasn't. They all took their seats and were talking among each other, laughing and talking among each other, up until about 8.39, when the leader himself, Alex and Afeno the majority leader, came in and called his colleague leadership. They spoke for about two, three minutes and started to address journalists. So Alex and Afeno then talks to journalists and say that, listen, these NDC MPs are raiding themselves for conflict, mm. and we are not going to give them that. We want peace. We know the state of the, of the country, and this is the time to rally the country around. So we are not going to do anything that will bring conflict. And so we are going to leave and go to our offices mm. and wait for the Speaker of Parliament to come and give consequential direction. But at that time, all of them had settled on the majority side yes. in, in, in the chamber. In the chamber. A lot of the N NDC MPs, including some MPP MPs who had come in later, had also taken their seats around the, the majority pews. And throughout today's sitting, there was not a single person who took their seat. But before, the before they took their seats, the, 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 the chamber, the seats, and the table name tags, yes. how was it done? Well, when they entered, the chamber was as they left it on Thursday. So all the name tags belonging to majorities were still there. But when the NDC MB started taking their seats, a lot of them started going to the other side to, to remove, remove the name tags from the up desk on the minority side to bring it to where they were currently. So they, they brought them that and then came to sit there insisting that they are the new majority and this is the new place they will, they will sit. We can listen now to majority Lalez and Afeni Markin, who is clear at the time that if they had to, if decided to stay, there will be chaos and they were not willing to give the NDC what they were looking for. We know there are innocent people out there, innocent Ghanaians going about their business, innocent Ghanaians in the academia, innocent Ghanaians who are struggling to get three square meals on the table for their families. We care about them. We understand that there is politics, but we must do it in a civil manner. We believe that the appropriate thing is to quietly yield to them and wait upon Mr. Speaker. After all, the ruling was directed at Parliament and the Speaker, not an individual MP. Yesterday, the bailiff of the Supreme Court served Parliament of Ghana through the legal directorate. The director of the legal department received the ruling of the court. So, in other words, Mr. Speaker is on constructive notice, or maybe I should say actual notice of the ruling of the court. We have to leave it there and respect Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker has been part of our democracy since 1992. He's a senior lawyer. He's practiced in our courts. And I believe that even if Mr. Speaker disagrees with the Supreme Court, he knows what to do. Suffice to state, at the risk of being repetitive, that we were not disrespectful of the chair. When the speaker made this pronouncement and the majority caucus disagreed with Mr. Speaker, we didn't cause commotion here. We left quietly and told Mr. Speaker that the right place to express those grievances will be at the court. So we expect our brothers and our sisters on the NDC minority side to do the needful. But all would be for Mr. Speaker to make a final determination. The nation is looking up to Mr. Speaker. 
all his years in politics, this is a crucial moment for him to add weight to what we have done to preserve the peace. MPP is for peace. MPP is for peace. MPP is for peace of Ghana. We will not allow anybody to disturb the peace of the country. It is a notorious fact that we remain the majority caucus of this parliament. So the leader of the MPP caucus in parliament, Alexander Afenyo Marken, that was the last time the, the group was seen in the chamber of yes. And in fact, um, prior to that, I was speaking to his chief whip, who indicated that should any chaos occur, it should be laid at the doorsteps of the speaker. But ultimately, the leader himself was called by the speaker when he did. Mm -hmm. his, his, uh, he arrived. And this was a pre-sitting pre meeting. meeting. They went in there, spoke for almost 20 minutes. It was clear that they hadn't reached any agreement. So the NDC MPs came back, the leadership, they came to take their seats, still in the majority peace. Alexander Fedor Markin walks across, comes through the chamber, and then exits, and then leaves. And then the Speaker of Parliament, 15, 20 minutes later, comes, takes his seat. They do the regular parliamentary work, they pray, they call the votes and proceedings, they sing what is now the new pledge that they, they mm. normally said in the first, week, first sitting of the week. And then he zooms right into his former communication. Where he now says, first, he says three things. First, he has been officially notified of the ruling of the Supreme Court of last Friday. That's all he says. He does not go in to say, okay, this is exactly what the Supreme Court says. But of course, we all know that the Supreme Court had voted 5-0 unanimously to stay his verdict, declaring four seats vacant. But all he says is that he has been served of the proceedings from the Supreme Court, one. And then he goes on, secondly, to say that there is no quorum to take decisions. He reads the standing orders and reads Article 102 of the Constitution and says, for there to be a quorum, there must be at least half of all MPs present before you can decide on matters voting-wise, decision-making. Mm. And we're only at least 136 NDC MPs seated. You don't have that. Mm. Because if all NDC MPs were present, they are just 136. Of course, if you hold sway that Kwachaka seat has been vacated. If not, 137. So he then goes ahead and says that because of this, and because the House is not going to sit, I don't know if it's because the majority have told him that they are never going to come back. Mm. Because if the House did not have a quorum to take decision today, Tomorrow they, they, they may have it. Right. But I don't know if the majority had informed him, the MPP MPs had informed him that they were not going to come to the House any moment from now or in the future. For which reason he said that then that he's adjourning Parliament indefinitely. Listen to Bagbin, give out his reasoning, and then ultimately adjourning the House indefinitely. As you may recall, on Thursday, I informed the House pursuant to Standing Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament on the occurrence of vacancies in the House in relation to four honorable members. Yesterday, I received a process from the Supreme Court, which is a ruling from the Supreme Court pursuant to an ex parte application directing parliament to recognize and allow the four affected members of parliament to duly represent their constituents and conduct full scope of duties of their offices as members of parliament pending the final determination of a suit filed by Honorable Alexander Afenyo Market. By Article 102 of the Constitution, 1992, and Order 641 of the Standing Orders of Parliament, I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business. Consequently, in view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of parliament and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in parliament, I will proceed to 
in accordance with standing orders 59, adjourn the House indefinitely. That is sine die. I want to quote standing orders 59.1. It says, the speaker may, in consultation with leadership, suspend a meeting of the House indefinitely or for a period determined by the speaker having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in the country. Honorable members, I have consulted leadership and I am exercising my discretion to decide to suspend a meeting of the House indefinitely. The House is accordingly agent sine die. And also the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin, ended today's proceedings. It's unclear when Parliament will come back. But the, the reaction started quickly. Yes. We heard from the minority leader, Dr. Casalato Force, in the NDC of the leader of the NDC group in Parliament right after they exited. They insist that they are still in the majority. We want to make something very clear. The NDC members of Parliament are in the majority in Ghana's Parliament. We've made our position and it's so clear. We are not changing our positions. We see ourselves as the majority. We are fortified by the constitution and the standing orders of this house and we see ourselves as the majority. We are grateful to the right honorable speaker for doing what is right and we respect the decision. We hope that the time will come that this house will be recalled and we take our position as the majority caucus. Thank you very much. Right, so, so what government business is now on hold? I want to work us through some of the business that are likely to be affected with what? this position taken yes, by the Nelson, at the start of the show, you did go mm. through all these key businesses that now on hold. For the most important ones, the, the, the vote and the appropriation, mm. which at the start of November we expect, and this is the last week getting into November, early next week. And so that is seriously going to be affected. It's also the $350 million worth of tax waivers. There's a lot of work that has been done on it to try and see that it's acceptable to both sides, although the minority still insists. The NDC group still insists that they oppose to it on the matter of principle. Mm. There is the matter of the Supreme Court nominees, two of them nominated by the president, vetted by the committee. Of course, the, 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 the members are split on partisan grounds. The NDC MPs are opposed, MPP MPs are in approval. So there is that split on that. And so these are some of the key issues. And then there's a $250 million loan the government will be seeking to get it to show up the city and see how well it does. So now we have to wait till mm. the Speaker of Parliament or whatever engagement have leadership as to when Parliament will remain. Before I let you go, there's this speech I'm making rounds. The member, of the, the, I don't know whether I should call her, the, 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 the vacated member of Parliament for Agona West, uh, Cynthia Morrison, with the majority, the, the MPP leadership in Parliament. What is the story around this picture? Well, yes, we, we heard that. Was she in parliament? Was she in the chamber? She, she did not come to the chamber, but we understand Kenya Japan is leading a certain process to try and broker peace among the front of the NPP. And so she was at the majority leader's office, and they took pictures. They were excited about the situation. In fact, some persons are suggesting that she might have withdrawn from the race, but of course we have to wait until she officially rides to the electoral commission, mm. announcing that she is no longer going to contest in the upcoming presidential and parliamentary primaries scheduled for 7 December. So Cynthia Morrison was in parliament today, not in the chamber, mm. but within the precincts. She was in the job 600, had um, a lot of conversation with Kennedy Japan, with Alexander Finomakin, the leader of the MPP group, and all of them excited that they are trying to broker peace. All the other three were not there, but Cynthia Morrison, for the first time since this house resumed exactly a week today, has shown face and came to Parliament today, Elton. Well, Wazan, thank you very much for your time in Parliament and that uh, excellent reportage. Now, outside the Chamber of Parliament, scores of people wearing MPP shares must are prompting tighter security at the presence of Parliament. Masala Baba was there for joining us, and this is his report. You can see right now that I'm more... 
um, barricades, crash barriers that have been brought here to ensure um, that parliamentary business today is conducted a, in a conducive and a serene uh, manner. We've been outside here monitoring um, the situation, but, but outside here um, also um, there is uh, tight security. We're not leaving anything um, you know, um, to chance. They, tend, uh, they tell us that they're leaving no stone unturned to ensure um, that today's parliamentary proceedings is done in an atmosphere um, of peace. Earlier, uh, we saw some supporters of the new patriotic party, um, hundreds of them um, gathered here within the prisons of the main parliament house um, itself. But the police uh, team here managed um, to send them a bit down the streets about 300 meters away, about 200 meters away from where I'm standing. Um, so when you go 200 meters um, down the street, directly opposite the uh, Osu military cemetery, you find um, some of the supporters, some of the MPP supporters, clad in party colors, um, standing there um, in solidarity with the members of parliament. They wouldn't tell us who bust them here, but go through about two checkpoints before you be able to get access um, to the Accra International Conference Center. Police officers um, stationed um, behind the crash barriers and barricades would ask you questions. If your vehicle um, is not marked, expect more questions. It's easier for the press, you know, um, to get in. But for people who are not in marked vehicles, you have to be a member of parliament to get an easy access um, to the place. Or perhaps you're attending another program at the Accra International Conference Center um, it's before you can get access. Members of the public um, are, are not allowed um, in the um, chamber where the proceedings um, are happening. Even for members of parliament, before they get access um, to the dome where the sitting is taking place, they are taken through body scanners. Um, they are checked before they are given um, entry um, to the place. There are special designated areas um, where the vehicles of the members of parliament um, have to park. So you can just drive straight to um, the place. You would have to park at a specially designated area and then walk, go through um, some of the um, checkpoints that have been mounted before you can get access to the main um, parliamentary, uh, 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 um, where the parliamentary center um, is happening um, today. So what you can see in the background, like I mentioned earlier, more crash barriers and police barricades um, are arriving here um, on the ground um, to ward off uninvited persons who would want to you know, come here, maybe foment trouble or maybe um, cause chaos. All right, so let's now explore what happened in Parliament today, at least from the perspectives of MPs uh, in, in the House. And in the studio this afternoon, we'll also be speaking to a governance expert, Professor Bafo Ajimandria, but in the studio is uh, Mutala Mohammed, is the NDC member of parliament for Tamale Central. Uh, New Titles Glover is a former MPP MP for Tama East and currently the regional minister for the Greater Accra Region. Of course, Professor uh, Balfour Ajimendria is a former UN governance advisor and currently CEO of the Kofo Foundation. Let me start with Honorable Mutala Mohammed. So, Afemio Markin, before leaving the chamber, makes the point that they were not going to help you achieve your purpose of creating chaos uh, in the chamber. Is that the mindset you took to the chamber this morning? Well, let me say good afternoon to my other colleague and prof, and good afternoon to you and your cherished viewers. I think that that was very insulting. If there is, there is any group of persons who have consistently created chaos, as far as parliament is concerned, is the NPP members of parliament. And it is important for me to make this correction. Mm. You people and your reporters, and Kweku when he sat here, you know, kept on referring to the MPP as the majority. That is completely misleading. The speaker made his ruling that the four members of parliament can no longer hold themselves as members of parliament based on constitutional provisions and the standing orders and precedents. Mm. Now, let's, even if we assumed that the Supreme Court ruling was a ruling that is supposed to be binding. That ruling ought to be communicated to members of parliament and the people of this country on the floor of parliament by the Mr. Speaker. 
So until such is done, mm. I don't know why you guys have... Uh, it, that, that, let, that, let that, doesn't this no, you know, answer that question? When the speaker said that yesterday I received a process for the Supreme Court, which is a ruling from the Supreme Court, first one to an ex-party application, didn't, the rest of the parliament no. to recognize and allow four affected MPs to really represent their constituents and conduct full scope of duties of their offices as members of parliament, pending final determination of the uh, As a matter of fact, the, the speaker didn't even read all the things you've just read. He didn't. The speaker only said that he had a communication mm -hmm. from the Supreme Court, which is ruling. He didn't expatiate on the house in the floor. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that. So as long as the speaker didn't do that, you cannot be seeking to describe the MPP as majority in parliament. They are minority in parliament. If the speaker had gone ahead to even read what you just read and indicated that parliament agrees with the ruling of the Supreme Court, that is when mm. you can then call, describe them as majority. And in any case, look, and I'm happy you have Prof online. Right. right. Look, the, the Supreme Court completely erred. Afenyo Markins went to court on the basis of proceedings that happened on Thursday. Mm. And if you know parliamentary practice, what, you have been a of reporter. Course. Of course. Whatever happened in parliament, the next day is when you approve the, 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 the proceedings the of the proceedings. previous day. That's why we have votes. After correction, actually. And most often you have corrections. Until it is the, the proceedings are corrected and approved, you can't take that as an official document of parliament. And mind you, there is an officer in parliament who indeed is being investigated as having delayed the raw proceedings of parliament to the NPP. They went to court with this misleading, you know, proceedings of parliament, and the Supreme Court made their determination based on what Afenyo Martins and his lawyers presented to them. But doesn't, so saying, doesn't the, 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 the resolution, or perhaps the ruling read by Mr. Speaker on the floor, as captured listen, by the record, it doesn't, still doesn't that constitute no, 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 on the no, matter. it doesn't. As a, you are saying that until, until, as a matter of until, fact, until official reports is produced. I'm, sur I'm surprised you are raising this. You have been... No, I'm because no, I'm, no, I'm no, not listening. No. The reason why I don't want you to ask because mm. you have been and one of the experienced supporters mm. in Parliament. Whatever happens, in, let's say today, assuming we were to sit tomorrow, we will then approve the vote and proceedings of today, tomorrow. Right. That is when, when you are doing the vote and proceedings, the speaker would go page by page so that the necessary corrections are done on it before you approve it. Until the approval is done, it cannot be deemed to be an official, you know, statement coming from parliament. There's right? even, there's even another step of the official Absolutely. report. Absolutely. So that I'm saying, and in fact, that. it must be approved by the speaker. Right. So if we had a, a proceedings in parliament on Thursday, we, you, you, you witness what happened today. Mm. We approved what happened on Thursday, today. Mm. Yet this was the misleading statement that Fenyo took to the Supreme Court. And they couldn't do due diligence. And that for me is worrying. No, the Supreme Court, let me finish. No, because I want, Court, I want a, a preliminary Court comment do, so that I can bring it They couldn't do due diligence. So the Supreme Court was misled into believing that what Afenio Markins and his lawyers presented to them mm. was the factual statement approved by Parliament. It was not. So that's why I'm saying that. What the Supreme Court did, as a political science student, right. I still remember the things, what the, the theories propounded by the likes of John Locke, Professor Montesco, and co. The purpose for separation of powers is not to tilt power okay. towards one arm. Mm -hmm. I am saying that what the Supreme Court did, they have an exclusive authority mm -hmm. to interpret the law. The directive of the Supreme Court was not interpreting the law. They were directing or they directed Parliament to stay. Of course, for 10 days. I'm saying that what has that got to do with interpretation of law? If the Supreme Court had said that what Parliament did and what Mr. Speaker did was not in sync with the Constitution or the laws of this country, but that directives, Parliament is not enjoying. And frankly speaking, mm. I was expecting the Speaker to cite the judges who sat on the case for contempt of Parliament. Only two institutions, only two arms of, of government have the capacity to cite for contempt, the judiciary and parliament. Only two. So I'm saying that I was expecting the speaker to cite the Supreme Court for contempt. And the speed and alacrity with which the Supreme Court sat on the matter, when they themselves 
said that they won't sit on Friday. No, it is shocking. Let, let, we will get to the meat of the, of the matter, but my, so the, the my, proper, my understanding is that... The proper correction mm -hmm. be done. The MPP is minority until the decision the speaker made. It's reversed. It's reversed. And as we sit today, we sit today, by the hands of parliament, the decision of the speaker had not been reversed. Okay. So the MPP is minority, and NDC is majority. So address me as majority member of parliament on your program. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alexander Fenyamarkin, the, 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 the leader of the MPP caucus, has been explaining why he went to court and been responding to the concerns raised by Anawo Mutala Mohammed. And that today's matter is a subject of controversy. And we just want to get your reactions on what happened today. All right, so I wasn't on the floor. So um, let me first give you a background to it. Okay, so Mr. Speaker called for a pre-sitting meeting, which is uh, something that he normally does. So at the pre-sitting meeting, he called um, the leadership of both sides, the majority leader. He addressed me as such when we are the pre-sitting, uh, addressed the NDC leader as minority leader. And he put three issues before us. Issue number one was that as a result of his uh, pronouncement last Thursday, uh, knowing also that there was an issue that I had filed at the Supreme Court, he is acknowledging to us that the Supreme Court has served, his, uh, served him with a ruling and that he is going to announce the ruling to the House when we sit. Second, he also informed us that as a result of that information is going to give, there will be the need for us to engage as a house. And thirdly, he said that he is aware that our colleagues on the other side have taken our seat. And that sitting, I, this one for emphasis, sitting in the chamber and arrangement there too, mm. It's not his responsibility, it's that of the clerk to parliament. I repeat, Mr. Speaker said he is aware of the sitting in parliament. That is, our colleagues haven't taken our seats. But that is not his responsibility. That is the responsibility of the clerks, the clerk to parliament. Okay. Then I came in to draw his attention that then he would have to speak to them to move before. Then our colleagues on the other side, led by Dr. Forsen, said, well, they are sitting there because of his earlier pronouncement. Until he makes a further pronouncement, they will not move. I engaged a clerk, and the clerk said that he did not remove my name tag from my seat and that administratively they acknowledge that the ndc mpp side is a majority and so they didn't move our seat so i reiterated to mr speaker that to avoid a needless confrontation because these are our friends ato and i share the same esprit de call ami abuja and i we are friends ama kofibwa is our senior brother i mean I cannot foresee a confrontation, all because of this constitutional lacuna of a sort. Therefore, I respectfully told Mr. Speaker that our side will yield the chamber to them for them to make, uh, for him to make his pronouncement. And I thanked him respectfully, bowed, and then left. Right, so that's the leader of the MPP caucus, Alexander Fenyamarkin, marking They're explaining what happened in Conclave before the speaker delivered that you know, statement on the floor. Nita Toglova is a former member of parliament for Tema East and uh, currently the regional minister for Greater Accra. Uh, Honorable, what is your reading of what took place on the floor of parliament today? Your understanding of it? And if you can unmute for me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. 
I'm saying good afternoon to my brother Mutala and Prof and your good self and to all your viewers. I've sat down and uh, listening to my brother saying that they are the majority and the fact that when it comes to anarchy, it is MPP people that does that. Well, Mutala, let me tell you, your DNA has not changed. NBC, your DNA and your, your genealogy has not changed. What kind of DNA is that? When it comes to... The DNA is about violence. It's NDC. He knows it. When it comes to the genealogy and the DNA of NDC, it's about violence. What is the issue? The issue is that there has been vacant seats. And based on it, the majority leader went to court. And when the writ was being served, I'm told that the speaker and his legal team refused to acknowledge the receipt of it. Okay? They, they refused to acknowledge the receipt of the writ that was being served. The speaker went ahead and made his pronouncement. But let me bring you back to the Constitution. Mutala, Parliament or the executive is not above the law. His Excellency, the President and the Speaker of Parliament are not above the law. We are all subjected under the Constitution. The 1969 Constitution, where we run the parliamentary democracy, that gave more power to Parliament. It's not the kind of democracy we are practicing under the 1992 Constitution. That is why the Constitution has given some powers to mm. the Supreme Court for interpretation. And let me make this thing clear. Mutala, if you are listening to me, the supremacy of the Constitution is very key to all of us. And I'm reading from Article 1.1. Mm -hmm. The sovereignty of God resides in the people of God, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in a manner and within the limits laid down in the Constitution. Two, this Constitution shall be the supreme law of Ghana and any other law found to be inconsistent mm. with any provision of this Constitution shall, in the ex extent of the inconsistency, be void. So if Parliament standing orders is saying that Constitutional provision is saying that because of the vacancy, Speaker has made a ruling, and for that matter, you are majority leader. Please, if you want to be majority leader, come to the proper proper medium. Don't come through the window. Don't use Takashi and say that you are majority, so you come and sit at the right side of Mr. Speaker. But isn't that and me, a, 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 the decision they've taken, I mean, the, the majority status, I mean, hold it, on. It, it was not by accident. They, hold on. They, 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 they earned it because of the Speaker's ruling. Let me tell you, if Speaker had received the writs, the fact that a writ has been served to the Speaker through the legal directive, that alone should not allow the Speaker to make that pronouncement. That mm -hmm. alone is the beginning of the legal process. The Speaker should have gone ahead to make that pronouncement. But, but, but Honorable, you know that, I mean, the, the understanding we've gotten, and this has been collaborated by even Alexander Fenyo Marken, that Parliament has a standing arrangement with the court. The sermons can only be said on Monday. The day wasn't Monday. So if the speaker refused to take it, it was based on a convention agreed between the two parties. Wait, El, uh, 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 Elton, yes. we're looking at the exigency of the time. What exigency? At the threat that the NDC have been issuing on social media platform, the way their communication is going on their press conferences and all that. Yes, you may have some convention between court and parliament, but if the need doesn't come as early as possible to avert some of these things, I don't think there's anything wrong for them to serve them on Monday. That is only an excuse that they want to dodge. Mm. But meanwhile, a decision has been made, and I was thinking that the speaker this afternoon will admit and correct what he has done to say that the minority should go back to their seats. They are not the minority members. So that when the full determination of the matter is done, then we can look at the whole issue. By the way, my brothers are misbehaving and conducting themselves and do all kinds of things. I feel worried. But, but honorable, you, you, honorable, you, you, if you monitor the events, I mean, the two sides were there from 5 a.m., 6 a.m. until the, the chamber was open. There was no indication that something until it was going to happen, until the, the Alexander Fajamara came, told the media that they were leaving the chamber to avoid what potentially could be a chaotic scene. 
But there was no indication that such a thing was going to happen. Remember the eve of 7th December 2021, the way the NDC conducted itself in the election of the speaker, right honorable speaker. Don't underrate our friends in the NDC. They can do anything they like. So that is why the majority leader said, in order not to, to, to encounter any, any row with mm -hmm. their colleagues, they would prefer to leave the prison but the person, for them to do... But, but the person who is seen in the video running away with a ballot paper does not belong to the NDC side. Fine, you can call Carlos in any names. But I'm talking about the preparation, the boot, the, the kicking of the ballot, that ballot boxes, the scattering of the whole place by Muntaka and all those people. What didn't happen on that very day? It is a sign. You see, let me tell Mutala. Mm -hmm. You have tried through the demonstrations. These Ghana something something demonstration you did, and the woman who claimed to be pregnant, you went they went to court, they did a test, and, and nothing has happened. You couldn't succeed. You went to the Galamse, you couldn't succeed. And if you think you can get this through this route of you being the 24-hour majority group, then you are a joke. Mutala, then you are a joke. Excuse my language. Why don't you allow the due process to, to work? Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has made a determination in, 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 in when you look at the Constitution, Article 2, the Supreme Court shall, for the purpose of declaration under Clause 1 of this article, make such orders and give such directions as it may consider appropriate for giving effect or enabling effect to be given to a declaration so made. Mm. So if the Supreme Court has made a determination, they have served you, and you don't want to respect it. And you went and sat at the place of the majority. Are you not being here the content of parliament? And you said what? Speakers should charge the Supreme Court judges contempt of parliament. A few comments from Prof, and I can allow you, because that. Prof is being on the line for some time now. Professor Bob yes, Bob you have, uh, sir, uh, Honorable Tazo Global, I'll come back to you, because we need to look at the way forward. Uh, Professor Bafaj Mendua is a former UN governor's advisor and currently CEO of the Kufour Foundation, and he joins me. Prof, it's a privilege as always to have you here on the post. So, uh, you've monitored events, and now there is some clarity as to the way forward. Parliament is, as, is on suspension until when we don't know. Government, some government businesses are on hold. For you, what should be the way out of this, you know, this, 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 this scene that is playing before our very eyes? Yes, Prof, if you can unmute for me, we'll be grateful. Right. Thank you. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, I was saying that I'm happy the way the speaker managed the day today, I mean, at the parliament. Mm. Because before today, there were all kinds of serious concerns about what could ha possibly happen, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the chamber. His decision to first uh, acknowledge receiving the Supreme Court's uh, message was good, and he said it without any comment, which means uh, not saying I rejected it or I'm confronting the Supreme Court or anything of the sort. He simply passed the message to all of us. Then, secondly, of course, he went through the agenda mm. and read the minutes of the previous uh, meeting, last Thursday's meeting. They, they, they approved it, and that was also supported. Then finally, of course, he came to say that uh, based on certain issues, he's uh, indefinitely uh, suspending parliament. I think it was a wise decision. Mm. I don't know what he has in mind, but certainly from my perspective, it gives room for people to go back and reflect a bit. Perhaps he's also going to be able to do further consultations because Frankly, I believe that the speaker, like any other political figure in this country, is looking for the best for the country, he's looking for the well-being of the people. I don't think he's interested in violence or anything of the sort. Right. But by taking these steps, he provides the opportunity for further consultations and perhaps uh, decide. On the other hand, if you want to be a little bit uh, cynical, you can also say that, look, he's done this, and he may not call back parliament. And then uh, in a three or four weeks, uh, his tenure ends, and the man dies. I don't know which way, but I want to be positive in terms of how he conducted himself today. So, so going forward, for you, I mean, the House is on suspension indefinitely, but then there are, the, the standard also provide, you know, avenue for Parliament to be recorded if the both, both sides they are able to 
uh, gather the required signatures to force the Speaker to recall the House. But the way forward in all of the Supreme Court is standing on one leg. Parliament, according to the Speaker, has taken uh, its decision. Until there is a reversal or a directive for that decision to be reversed, the status quo will remain. Prop the way forward, because clearly the, the, the entire country was on tender who's this morning, awaiting the, the, the Speaker's directive. Correct. And that's why I think he took that step, perhaps to allow that to happen. Now, the way forward, I think this is the time for sober heads to prevail. And I think this is also the time for these so-called big political actors to consult each other mm. for the sake of preserving the peace of this country. I think we do not have to act to disrupt the political process. In this case, the parliamentary process that is due to end formally in a few weeks' time. I think if we allow this to fester without any solution and then we pass into the next phase, that would be a big the service to the people of Ghana. So I'm hoping, I'm really sincerely hoping and praying that uh, the speaker, Mr. Bagbin, and uh, privately, uh, President, or Chief Justice, or whoever matters, they must put their heads together and find a way to bring some sanity to our political process. I believe strongly it's only private uh, diplomacy uh, that will solve this, because if each of them were going to stand by their guns, by the position they've taken, then I'm afraid that confrontation will be there, even though there'll be no open fight or conflicts. I mean, two weeks ago, when we spoke about illegal mining, LI-2462 was one of the key issues that you mentioned, that there was a need for that revocation to take place. Now, that is on hold because of the decision taken by the Speaker today, plus other businesses of government. Correct. Well, unfortunately, if the Speaker does not reverse himself or call Parliament back into session, then everything having to do with government business will come to a halt. Mm. And the implications of that will be dire for us. And that's why I'm just hoping and praying that these important people in our politics should put their heads together. They all should demonstrate statesmanship. This is the time for this country to fly instead of sinking. And it depends on the thinking and actions of these important political actors. So for me, the onus is on them. If they want all of us to think, well, then future generations will judge them. I don't think it's in anybody's interest to see a serious disruption of our political process at this time. It doesn't serve anybody's interest. All right, Prof, thank you so much. Let me come to which are like, you have some, so, first and foremost, titles need to do some reading around the political history of this country and the party he belongs. If he goes, and I have a book, I'll make it available for him to read free of charge. The end of the illusion, not written by any Ghanaian. The Pulungugu is still a reminder. The UP was formed when war drums of Asante was played on the very day your party was formed. Now you sit here, and you tell me that when it talks about violence, the NDC, bomb throwing. And as a matter of fact, J.B. Dankwa and Obichi Lamte and Co. were found by a commission set up by Buzia. And they were found to have been guilty of the chaos they, they caused in this country. So when it comes to violence, your party is next to nothing. And in any case, let's come to this fourth republic, right? Not even fourth republic, the eighth parliament. Your party commandeered military men, men in uniform and guns to indeed enter parliament. That was an affront, affront to our democracy. And if there is any crime that any political party has ever committed against our democratic growth, your party stands tall. So preach your party being a party that is devoid of violence to the Marines and not to human beings. And again, why? What is he talking about? Every single thing the NDC did on the matter of the elections of the speaker, mm. we stand on the side of law on the side of democracy. And the least said about the supremacy of the law, the better. The law does not say the supremacy of the Supreme Court. The law says the supremacy of what? The law in Article 111 he's reading. Maybe perhaps he needs to do a second reading. Nobody has said that powers be given to the legislature. And if you care to know, in a democracy, democracy parliament is even more important. You can have a military dictatorship with judiciary. Mm. You cannot have democracy 
without parliament. Right. And we have never said, nobody has ever said, that parliament should have a way to do what they want to do. I think that he should be responding to the point I made earlier. And I thought we were going to ask Prof. Why? Honorable Afenyo Martins, even before the speaker made his determination, he had already gone to Supreme Court. And he was seeking to serve the speaker on a matter the speaker did not get a, give a ruling on. And in any case... But, it, but, but remember that he, he indicated... Indication. Uh, I mean, he explained even before Parliament no, but I'm sat. saying that even before. So is that like I'm arguing with, with Elton? Mm -hmm. And I suspect that Elton is going to slap me. So I quickly go to the Supreme Court. And I was scandalized. The Supreme Court even gave him hearing on a matter that the speaker had not even taken a decision on. That was one. Two... The Afenio Martins went to court with his lawyers using facts or things they claim to be fact. Proceedings of Parliament on Thursday, proceedings that had not been approved by Parliament. So officially, that proceedings was not the proceedings of Parliament. And Parliamentary proceedings, what you do is that when you sit subsequently, you would have to go through, and that is why the speaker says, page one, page two, all the corrections needed to be done. When that thing is done, it is approved by the House, and it then becomes an official document of the House. Afenio Martins went to court with a document that was not officially coming from Parliament. The Supreme Court made their ruling based on something that was brought up. So he deceived even the Supreme Court, and I expect and, and, and then, and then, And then to be factual on this, in fact, the votes and proceedings of Thursday the votes and proceedings were approved today. In Parliament today. Today. So if the vote and proceedings had not been approved, now the question is, who licked it that to him? And in any case, the vote and proceedings ought to be approved by the, by the House and then the Speaker. But has uh, it diminished the content of Afeni Martin's suit before the it Supreme It absolutely court? diminishes it. So if you go to court on the basis of an, of an illegality, claiming, purporting to be the, the, the actual happenings in Parliament, mind you, we have done some corrections. We've done some corrections when we were approving the vote and proceedings today. So before those corrections, Afenio Markins went to court with it, and he's a lawyer. Now he sits there, and he's telling me, Mutella, I want you to know, we are not arguing on anything. We are arguing on the basis of law. Mm -hmm. And what I, when I started by saying that we are the majority, I said, look, assuming we are going, the speaker is going to agree with the ruling of the Supreme Court. And we all agree that the Supreme Court didn't err. Their ruling should be binding on everybody. Now, the Speaker would have to communicate same to us on the floor of Parliament. Until the Speaker does that and gives his ruling, the NDC is majority. Now, he says that they got the majority through, through the polls and that we cannot be seeking to. What we are simply seeking is that this country is governed by laws. Now, he talks about demonstration. And he's insulting. Oh, no, but no, no, I want to conclude. No, no, let me just, I want to conclude. No, no, I'm just, just, no, no, a, let question, me just, conclude just a question on the Supreme Court. I mean, I'm just trying to get your understanding. Perhaps maybe we may get a constitutional lawyer to help us understand it. When the Speaker today makes reference to him being served with the order of the Supreme Court, doesn't that amount to the Speaker saying that I accept the position of no, the Supreme it Court? No, I mean, it would be the height of naivety for anybody to assume that it amounts to accepting. If the speaker wanted to accept that, the speaker would have said, look, I have gotten communication from the Supreme Court. And I, I because mind you, the, you have two arms of government, the judiciary and the legislature. Mm -hmm. And for the purposes of pious and those who think like him, the, the, in, in a democracy, in separation of powers, the three arms, no arm is more important and bigger than the other. So don't seek to tell me, because the Supreme Court had a ruling, the Speaker can decide to disagree with the ruling of the Supreme Court on the basis of the fact that the ruling is not about interpretation. But let me make this point. Mm. He was trying to tell me, and he says that, look, you people, you led demonstration about, about mining. Don't insult the people of this country. The Galamse issue was not organized by the NDC. Now, assuming without admitting, even NDC publicly organized the demonstration. Is it an acceptable demonstration or not? So don't seek to insult the civil society organizations, professors, media men, and ordinary Ghanaians who agree with the fact that the Galancy men menace mm -hmm. is something we should all demonstrate. Let, let, let me bring him but in. I'm just going to on this. Yes. Now, 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 listen. Because we need to look Nanado, at the business is Nanado, affected. President Nanado, mm -hmm. a good lawyer as he is, he rose to prominence through demonstration. And Article 21 
Clause 1D of the 1992 Constitution enjoins us to use demonstration as one of the means by which we can seek a redress on a matter. So don't seek to belittle demonstration. If indeed demonstration is what the NBC is using, we learned it from the President of the Republic of Ghana because he is the king of demonstrations in this country and he rose to prominence through demonstration. Honorable Titus Glover, you have a reaction? I do have a reaction. Please go on. And, um, let me tell my brother that Patapa is not going to solve this problem. Oh, Master, who is doing Patapa? Respond to me. You were talking, I was quiet, and you ranted all over. So please, no, exercise people. No, I, 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 allow him. Allow, I, allow, I, allow the Honorable Glover to go ahead. Please go on. Well, let me admit that um, it is not about violence or any noise making that will solve this problem. The majority leader went to court, of course, the Supreme Court. Uh, the speaker has been said. And this afternoon, we made some uh, strong uh, statement that calls for cool heads. And I believe that the NDC and PP will reflect on some of these things. Nobody wants to force or turn the hand of parliament. All that a freedom market did was an interpretation. Mm. So, is that is the speaker declared. And why are you not waiting for the determination to be made by the Supreme Court? And that is for me, that is my concern. For the speaker to go ahead and make those pronouncements. And when they had the conclave, listening to and watching Afinio Markin uh, talking, when he met the leadership in conclave, and that he has admitted the, the orders of the Supreme Court, I thought when he sat in the plenary, he would have reversed that statement that he made. So that would spin those go live. There's no need even to call for, for any, any adjournment senator. Mm. You get my point? Mm. So that they all go back to their respective positions and the business of the House will continue. But the Speaker held back. He did not uh, uh, comply with the orders of the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court has told him what to do. He says, stand down and let us wait after 10 days mm. when we make a full determination of this matter, then we can continue. But the Speaker decided to be silent on it and just say that he has agent parliament in that. And for me, that is how it is. Anyway, there is, there is a lot of things that we can do together and see how we could do, because I'm looking at the international interests of this country. Right. That has been a beacon of democracy. 32 years in the uh, 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 constitutional democracy is, is, is something that we need to guard jealously. Therefore, things that would destroy this image, we need to guide it and make sure that we have heard some of these things that's going to happen. So for me, Mutala, Tell your people, you and your people, tell them that no, it's not Patapa. Let us exercise restraint. But, 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 Honorable, then... Honorable Glover, are you not concerned about pending government business that requires immediate no. attention? You are looking to, 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 to help the energy sector money. with $250 million loan. You are, you are seeking to grant task waivers to some companies. There's also, you know, the budget on, 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 for, 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 for the I'm first quarter of 2025. <laughs> Elton, I'm, I'm deeply concerned because that's why I'm saying that when Speaker met the leaders in Conkley to say that he has received the orders of the Supreme Court, right, asking him to stand down whatever he has done, I would have loved that he would have told the leadership that, look, based on my pronouncement last week, I want to reverse that decision. Mm. I can do that rather than to postpone the, the House Senate die. For me, that is where I have a problem with the Speaker. Do you understand? Because mm. the Supreme Court has given you some orders. And listen to what the Supreme Court, the Constitution is about the Supreme Court when they give orders here. Right. And Article 2 4 is a failure to obey or carry out the terms of an order or direction made or given under clause 2 of this article constitutes a high crime under this Constitution and shall, in the case of the President, Vice President, blah, 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 blah. So if the Supreme Court has given orders to the Speaker, why is he not complying? He only came to inform the, 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 the members of plenary that I received the, the communication from the Supreme Court. And for that matter, uh, I have to postpone parliament uh, uh, indefinitely. For me, that is my worry. Speaker could have cured that problem right there so that both the minority and majority would take their respective seats in the chamber. Then the business of the House can continue. But for now, what he has done, it is left for him to call back parliament. But I think that engagement can still continue, mm. talking can continue, and we'll see how best we can get ourselves out of this 
this problem with finding out. Honorable Glover, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Let me wrap up yes, with Honorable Tala Mohammed. Their own questions and they <laughs> answer them. Unfortunately, even when they said their own questions, they answered them wrongly. Mm. I think you know, when I listened to him, a lot of the statements he made as to what happened at Conclave are complete misrepresentation. But you were not there. No, I had communication with my leadership. Second-hand yeah. information. Oh, why? Second-hand information. I, I trust in what I think your Honorable uh, uh, Dr. Atupo Fosin tells me, than what he tells mm. me. Because I can give a litany of such truth peddled out by leadership. And in any case, is it not worrying that the very day the speaker took the decision, mm -hmm. made the determination in the matter of four of our colleagues who are going independent, only, f only 10 members of the MPP were seated behind their leader. Only 10. Mm. Today, when he said that because they didn't want confusion, they entered into the chamber first. When there was already communication by the speaker that no one enters into the same chamber except after 8 o'clock mm. and after the determination of the speaker, they went into the chamber. When our members entered, he didn't have his members behind him. That was the only reason. That was the only reason why they didn't sit where they sat. And in any case, when they went to Concliffe, he said that the speaker addressed Honorable Afe uh, Atuforsen as minority and majority. That is not true. As a matter of fact, the reason why they didn't sit, they were insisting that when they come to the chamber, they would want us to move to the minority side, and they sit at the majority side. And the speaker says, look, my ruling still stands. And the fact that the speaker didn't make pronouncement on the communication he had from the Supreme Court tells you that the, the, the speaker disagrees. So the way who forward, tells, who yeah. tells him? Mm -hmm. Who tells him that the speaker is compelled to agree with the decision of the Supreme Court in a matter that is not interpretation of the law? It was a ruling was directives that stay what you are supposed to do. In any case, I don't think he read the ruling of the, the Supreme Court. Honorable Affirmative Markings went for 10 days. The Supreme Court says we are giving you more. We are giving you more than 10 days. Yeah, no, it's indefinite. That's what the Supreme Court did. So it is the president or the executive asked them to jump. They asked how high. Because if the person who came to court is seeking 10 days and you decide to give him more than 10 days, Friday you said you won't sit, you are sitting on Friday. And in any case, the lack of due diligence by the Supreme Court should be worrying because Honorable Afenio Markins went to court with proceedings that was not official proceedings of parliament because every proceedings of parliament becomes official after it is approved by the house so the way this forward, was not approved now the way forward, that it yes, was not of approved. course i mean and that we, is why we, we are worried we, 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 we in any case, point. if i were the supreme court mm -hmm. we will humbly eat the we will eat the humble pie and says look we were we were deceived and that for me itself is contempt honorable afenio markings and his lawyers deceived the supreme court by presenting to the supreme court something they deem to be factual proceedings of the house when in actual fact it wasn't you witness we approved the vote and proceedings on thursday today right and there were a lot of amendments at least four amendments and corrections were done in the votes and proceedings and this was what the supreme court used as a basis and let me state this very clearly the supreme court is not superior the, the judiciary entirely is not superior to parliament in a democracy. Neither is it superior to the executive. And maybe perhaps Pagos need to go and read the writings of Professor Montesco, John Locke, and co. He would have proper appreciation of what constitutes separation of powers. That power must not be tilted towards one arm, lest it will be used arbitrarily. Every opposition the NDC has participated in in parliament is, is in the interest of the democracy and the defense we are, of good we, governance. We wrap it that up. is why so, we are so, so, there, there are a few government businesses that are on hold because of the decision taken by the speaker today. One of them is uh, the 350 fraudulent, 350, no, but my 350, concern, I'm coming, mm -hmm. fraudulent, fraudulent. And I say this with all the seriousness. How can you be seeking to borrow about $100 million, yet you are giving $350 million to foreign companies in the name of 1D1F? Who does that? And there's also Who the, does the, the mining in Forest Reserve, the LI, now that you are not certain, it means that progress on that will also not happen. I believe that is one of the reasons why the likes of 
Afenyo and my good friends are doing so because they are openly against any attempt to stop the Galamse. The president promised the people of this country he was putting his presidency online. If he had decency left in him, this man would have resigned. And he then, wouldn't have spent and his is, day because our water bodies are more destroyed than it was when he made. And then in the absence the of a budget for the first quarter in Iran, the end is elected. You are not address. concerned that you, there, there will be no money for I'm saying spend. that and the state of the nation's address. We are profoundly concerned, but we will not compromise the defense of rule of law and democratic governance on the altar of what pleases the NPP. We won't do that. What we are seeking, what we are seeking to do mm -hmm. is respect the Constitution, respect the democracy that we are all enjoying to practice. Now, Afenyo is saying that because they didn't want violence, the statement he made to the speaker when he was leading his members to walk out, do, does he want me to state it here? No, let, 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 we'll does leave it here. Does he want me to state it on TV? We'll leave it here. He told the speaker. We'll leave it here, and then we'll have that discussion again. He said it Honourable, in the face of the speaker. Honourable yes, Honourable the person is pretending Honourable to Mutala love the speaker Mohamed. so much, to respect the speaker so much, <laughs> and then they love democracy. Do you want me to state no, what you told the no, speaker uh, when you are leaving no, the big, It was on record, so we'll leave it here. Honourable Talab Mohamed is a member of parliament for Tamil and of course, you heard Titus Global, uh, Greater Accra Regional Minister, former MP, and of course, Professor Bafo Ajimandu. I will take a short break. Uh, here on the pause, but uh, before we do that, though, here on the pause, uh, in a move to inspire environmental sustainability, combat climate change, and promote wildlife conservation through the powerful medium of film, Joy News in partnership with the Climate Development Knowledge Network and the Ghana Green Film Festival proudly present the 2024 edition of the Green Film Festival. The year, this year's festival themed stories spark change will take place from Friday, 25th October, that is Friday, to Saturday, 26th October, 2024, at the Legon Botanical Gardens here in Accra. Uh, over these two days, we will showcase films that highlight the intersection of human activity and the environment, emphasizing the transformative power of storytelling in driving environmental sustainability and social change. Join us for an exciting exhibition of films, documentaries, and discussions aimed at raising awareness and sparking action towards preserving our, our planet. Don't miss out this Friday and Saturday at the Legon Botanical Gardens. We'll return with more here on the pause. Welcome back to the show. This is the pause here on Joy News. Now, Ghanaians, we showed up at the headquarters of the National Identification Authority with hopes of securing their Ghana card have been left disappointed after they were turned away due to the strike by the Public Service Workers Union, of which workers of the NIA are members. Most of them expressed their surprise at the strike, which they only found out after getting to the NIA head office. My colleague Kenneth Jesse was there, and this is his report. Well, the strike by the Public Services Workers Union has entered its second day, and over 50 institutions and divisions in this country have laid down their tools over what they describe as discrepancies in the implementation of the single spine salary structure. Now, workers, including those at the Electoral Commission, some at the National Labor Commission, and other state institutions say they will not go to work until government heeds to their demands. One of the mostly affected place is the National Identification Authority, the institution that is mandated with the issuing of Ghana cards. Now, when we got here, there were empty seats, Usually when you enter this premise, you see a lot of these seats occupied by people waiting in line to get your National Identification Authority card or otherwise known as Ghana card issued to them. But it is not the case. I spoke to some of the agitated customers who have been waiting since morning, but to no avail. Because my SIM card, I can't go for the SIM card because they said the Ghana card is damaged. And since it's damaged, I need to do replacement. So with this one, I can't even do call or anything. You see, we are houseless. And we want to take some Okarabi and maybe riding. And the person say we need Ganaka to, to guarantee it. And we need the, the motto. Yesterday, we, we went there, and the person say unless we bring the Ghana card. So this morning, we, go, we call some officer. He said, well, we should come here. So we came here. We come here right now and then they are on strike. So the motto 
person is on hold right now. I'll be going to the university next year, so I'll be needing to fill some forms. Do you have any other option? No. So I just have to wait for them to resume. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission has also been pleading with them to return to the negotiation table, insisting that they can only renegotiate with them if they call off their strike. From the headquarters of the National Identification Authority in Accra, my name is Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. This is a nationwide strike. In the Ashanti region, however, though, uh, public sector workers defiled directive from their union leaders to embark on a strike over the single spine salary structure. The strike, which was called by the Public Workers Sector Workers Union, was expected to bring all public sector institutions in the country to a halt. However, checks in many offices in Kumasi, including the National Identification Authority and the Forestry Commission, indicated workers were at post at the time of our visits. Now, joining us in the studio is the General Secretary of the Public Service Workers Union, Bernard Ajay. Mr. Ajay, you're welcome. Thank you very much. So why are you on strike? Why are you not working? Well, so um, in our publication, we've indicated that we are dealing with the fair wages, as the law requires, uh, in terms of negotiations for institution-specific allowances for our members. Mm. Uh, we have 70 institutions, public institutions that are members of the Public Services Workers Union, and about 45 of them subsist on the single spine salary structure. And they are all your members? Uh, they are all our members. 45? 45. 45 public uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, we negotiate both for their uh, uh, salaries and then conditions of uh, other conditions of service, mm. including what we call institution-specific uh, allowances. Okay. So we have written to the fair wages. Uh, we are in negotiations. Uh, due to the growing disparities uh, that have arisen uh, in the public uh, salary administration, um, we have written for certain allowances to be paid. And uh, we are embarking on this strike because of the delays and preferential treatment uh, that are offered to other public institutions. Can you specify the allowances uh, you are demanding? We are demanding government support services allowance and then uh, public services administration equity allowance. Because what, 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 what does that mean? Yes, as I indicated, um, a lot of, you know, when a single spine came into being, uh, public institu institutions were grouped into what we call service classification. Right. And some of these institution-specific allowances were to be negotiated in the service classification. Mm -hmm. So if you have institutions that are in a particular service classification, it only means that the skills required for the job, the qualification, expertise, and everything are almost similar. And therefore, certain things and uh, allowances are supposed to be run through those institutions. What we found out is that uh, institution-specific allowances have been granted to other public institutions, those service classification, mm. to the exclusion of the public service organization. Right. And when you go in to request for it, they tell you you don't uh, deserve that. And you wonder why you don't deserve it when other people within the service classification uh, are having it. So then they resort to the strategy of delay. So you go for meetings, they tell you, well, we don't have mandate, you hear from us in a fortnight. The fair wages. The fair wages, yes. You don't have mandate. You go, you go and uh, three months they've not called you. You push, push, when you threaten strike, they call you, they sit down with you. But the same fair wages says that you, are un you, you, you don't qualify for the allowance, and yet they are meeting with you? Well, so the point, that, that sometimes that's the irony, and sometimes we even believe that the way they are going about the single spine defeats the purpose for which the single spine was uh, established. And that's what has caused the disparities and the inequities, because that is what the single spine was supposed to solve. Right. And then harmonize allowances in the public uh, sector. We found out now that all those things have come back. And to tell you the truth, being in the industry, the sim simple single spine now is a fiasco. Mm. Yeah, it has failed woefully. And in April 2022, we agreed with government that we should establish a nine-member committee which to review it, which was established. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to work within three months and submit its report. We are in October 2024. We don't know where the report is. Nobody is giving us any information. You ask, and it's like they don't know. And rather, we hear fair wages trying to do new salary structure for other public sector organizations. I mean, that is not fair, and that's not how to run a fair and transparent uh, uh, salary. So, so in the absence of the allowances that you are asking that you are paid, how is that affecting your output? Well, people are not being remunerated for the job they are performing. 
and those who have not been are being enumerated even you don't have what we call equal pay for work of equal value mm. it's not there so a lot of public sector workers including our members are very disgruntled mm. they are not happy uh, about how they are being uh, treated that they toil and they sacrifice the work as patriotic citizens of this country but at the end of the day uh, they are not well remunerated and it, of course it's impacting on their work if you have school fees to pay if you have uh, rent to pay if you have hospital bills to attend to and you're, you are you know you are working and you are not getting what you are expecting this economy uh, we have obviously uh, you should know that it's impacting on people's mental health it's impacting on their output they are at work they are not happy even though they are killing themselves to work uh, for their Mr. Jay, for how long have you been on this road with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission? Well, so that is it. We've had the Fair Wages put out some statement exactly. that it was only on the 19th of September that we started. Absolutely. Now, as I indicated, we have so many institutions. And per the way the arrangement with the Fair Wages is and the way they deal with us, we couldn't, of course, go with all the 45. So you take each organization and we negotiate it was, separately. It was not a unified... And, and for, exactly. And for some organization, and the records are there, I brought it, you, 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 you submit proposal as far back as May 2022. Mm -hmm. And as I speak to you, we have not concluded. Over two years. Over two years. There are a number of institutions uh, like that. So what we decided to do in September 2019 was now to put all our institutions together so that you see that we are, we, are, we, are, we are a strong uh, union with all these institutions. So the fact that we are coming to you one at a time should not make you think that we are not relevant and therefore you delay negotiations for two years when the allowances are supposed to last for two years. So it's been four years since we reviewed some people's allowances. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what has happened to mm -hmm. the allowance due to the erosion of the CD and all that. So all we did in, in September 19 was then to put all these organizations together, including even those we are here to submit proposals that look, so, 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 deal with us mm -hmm. and give these two allowances in the interim. Then we can look at how to solve the problem. So now, as we sector. speak, you are not negotiating separately, or you've harmonized all of yes. them. Yes, and we are asking for these two allowances: one to correct the inequities and disparities that has come about due to the way the fair wages have handled allowance negotiations in this country, and the, the fact that the committee that was set up mm. to review the single spine to correct the issue of low pay and low salaries uh, in the public sector but, have also but, not but the entities good. under you are not the same so obviously in terms of negotiation it cannot be a uniform you know approval for, for all because work work model are different from one entity to the other exactly so, so when you do negotiation m block clearly exactly I mean, we are everybody. talking about the institution's uh, specific allowance for the service classification okay so one of the service classifications you have is, for instance, public policy, planning, service administration, and related services. A number of my institutions fall within uh, that. The NCCs, the Electoral Commission, even CLOSAG members, and all, they fall under, under this. Most of them fall under this uh, service uh, uh, category. Mm -hmm. And I've told you that the reason why we had a service category is because the job functions the, the skills required, the duties, and the job scheduling, as you have mentioned, for some of these institutions are similar. Right. And therefore, when you do the negotiation, you should know that, oh, if this institution deserves this allowance, then this one too, they are performing the same job. A typical example is the tertiary research science uh, service category, mm -hmm. where we have the universities, we have the GAI, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, mm -hmm. which, which are members of the PSW and the CSIR, right. because they are scientific and research institutions. Mm -hmm. So for instance, they do research. So if you are paying book allowance, for instance, to, to the universities because of the research they do, it goes it without saying, it them must them benefit them. them. them well. Now, you, you, there are some allowances which you have given some of the groups, and you decide to deny uh, yeah, that, those that other is. groups in that service uh, classification. Uh, and some of those who are being denied happen to be members of the public uh, services. Uh, and, and that's why we're raising the issue. And that is why we are raising the issue. Unfairness, exactly. Of the law. Exactly. The Labor Commission says that they cannot negotiate whilst you are on strike. But my understanding is that workers of the Labor Commission itself are members of your group and they are supposed to be striking. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, definitely. So that, that is a principle. You see, when you have principles, you must do things that will make your principle relevant. You understand? You don't do things to disadvantage people. And you begin to use principles and laws to stifle mm. the people. I am telling you, if today, today, we are called and what we are offered is fair relative to what other people are offered. Call off. Our interest is not to sit home and not go to work. We love our jobs. And I'm telling you on authority that there are most of our members go to the GBCs, the NCCs, yes. and the who, use, who use their own money. The little salary they earn, they use their own money sometimes to perform official duties. Mm. And I, I dare you, the media, to go down and do some of this investigative journalism and inform the public so that it doesn't look like workers are being un, unreasonable. Okay. But workers use their own money to perform official, official duties. But in Kumase, some appears to be working, even though you've declared a strike. Well, so you, you can uh, expect that there will be a few people who, for whatever reason, uh, may want to uh, take certain actions. But the fact is that, so far as we are concerned, a uh, majority of our members uh, are, and these people you are saying are even going, I can tell you for a fact that they also want some of these uh, allowances. And when we are successful, they will be the, the, the beneficiaries. It is so serious that you can have two people in the same organization, and that's a typical situation in Lance Commission, huh? mm -hmm. where we, we, we have two major unions, the PSW and Close Act. You can go there, you find two people, the same qualification, mm -hmm. the same position, the same job schedule. Right. They all come to work the same time, live the same time. But the one who belongs to PSW is being denied the allowance. Because of Why? Work. Because he belongs to PSW. <laughs> and the one who belongs to the other union is being paid that allowance to the tune of almost 53%. 53%? Yes, of their basic salary. So what are we talking about? I, I think... We should do things properly in this uh, country. Mm. And the fair wages, we've dealt with them over the years since the, uh, the fair wages was uh, established. And I must say, it's very despicable how uh, they, they, they do some of these negotiations now. And you, there's no way you can explain that two people, the same qualification, same organization, same number of years of experience, same job, are being treated different. Is your strike the reason why there was no weather forecast today? Well, it's possible. Well, it's possible. Well, it's possible. Yes, it's possible, because GMET is also part of the public services workers. So until your demands are resolved, you will continue to be on strike? We will strike. continue to be on strike. And what we are doing is, if, if anybody thinks that, okay, we, we should ignore these people, they don't have a case, the other public service institutions, including the GRAs, the airport, civil aviation, VRA, they will all join solidarity uh, strike. Mm. Because, I mean, we are workers, therefore, if you cheat any worker or you treat any worker wrongly, other workers are conscious of it because they if they don't support their colleagues for them to be treated fairly and their rights respected, after they deal with their colleagues, they will come after them. So we are all together. For now, they are out. Those on the single spine have embarked on this action. We have an election yeah. coming up, and uh, workers of the Electoral Commission, uh, for now, they are also, they've also joined the strike. Yes, and uh, uh, the workers of Electoral Commission also deserve, I mean, better condition of service. They deserve their own salary structure, just as Fair Wages is doing for other public sector right. institutions. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Manager, let's leave it here, and we'll monitor the strike action that you declared, yeah. and that started last week. Well, that'll be our show for today. For more stories, log on to our website, myjoyonline.com. Story speaker agents sitting indefinitely amid vacancies controversy. Parliament refused claims of Babin Akufuado negotiation of a vacant parliamentary seats, and of course, so many stories. MG Others Multimedia Group Limited condemns attack on Erasmus Aridonko and three other employees. Of course, if you go on majoronline.com, there are so many stories that you can see. Well, whatever you are up to in the hours ahead, I hope it's profitable. My name is Elton Bowie. See you same time tomorrow with another exciting edition of The Post. Until then, stay safe.